I think we're about to start now. Uh, if you were looking for the post boot camp, this is the right class. Um, I'm Julio Vasconcelos, and let me start out by just giving you a little bit of an introduction to who I am, as well as uh, a little bit of the class. So I run uh, business development for a company called Experience Project, which is an online community where people connect around sh experiences that they really care about. Uh, business development is probably a really broad term, because I actually probably handle everything that's not technical in the company. Um, which is how I originally met Jennifer, uh, because we've done so much work around social media in terms of building viral videos, uh, Facebook applications. Uh, we've had a lot of success on Twitter, on Dig, on Reddit. So I think uh, to date, I've just had a chance to touch a lot of different pieces of social media and probably know a little bit about everything, but I'm not really an expert on anything. Uh, and what I wanted really to do today is just have an opportunity to bring people here that really are the experts on virality, that really are the experts on spreading the word using social media so that you guys could learn a little bit from them in terms of how they approach some of these questions as well as some of the overall tactics and tools that they use to really spread their word pretty, pretty widely. Um, we initially came up with uh, the idea of post, the next one, um, because we had a, a big problem with uh, uh, sort of the, the end of the class last year, where, which was that a lot... Big, big, big is maybe a little extreme. A small, a small problem where a lot of people had some uh, really great ideas, but I think that we only touched upon like the actual execution part of it, uh, sort of fairly late, in, fairly late in the game. I uh, hope Jennifer agrees with that. No. <laughs> uh, whereas uh, people really wanted to make a difference, they really wanted to spread the word about the different causes and the different groups that they were working on, but they didn't actually know how to use Twitter. They didn't know how to use Facebook for, for uh, a marketing perspective. So we decided this year to try to put together this boot camp and really early on in the quarter, uh, give an opportunity for all of you to be able to learn a little bit about what tools are out there, how to use them, and how to actually uh, implement them effectively. So really, our focus today, sort of our main goal is really this uh, sort of the how-to thing um, and, and try to go through that. And I hope that uh, this is a fairly interactive session where you know, if you have any questions, something doesn't make sense, uh, you know, feel free to just raise your hand and ask a question because I think it's really uh, meant to be a conversation between uh, a lot of the panelists as well as yourself and you know, feel free to throw out real case studies and real questions that you're tackling and we'll hopefully be able to address some of those uh, right away. Um, just in terms of giving uh, an overview of the agenda, uh, I'm going to just give you a, a quick overview of some of the frameworks that we're looking at. Uh, then Andy, who I think most of you know, is going to talk a little bit about uh, the Dragonfly model, uh, talk about how this ties to the class and how it ties to your projects. Uh, we're then going to switch over uh, into the sort of the first fireside chat, which uh, Matt Window from Facebook is going to be leading uh, the conversation uh, with Dave McClure and Ed Baker. They'll, they'll introduce themselves a little bit. That'll probably be about a half a mi uh, sort of half an hour, 45 minute conversation, uh, which we want to keep very interactive. We want to really talk about a lot of case studies, uh, really get into a sort of a lot of a lot of the numbers and a lot of the tactics that have worked with for both Dave and for Ed, as well as uh, anything that Matt has seen. And then we'll actually shift over to the uh, second panel which uh, you know, Jeff is going to be moderating uh, with Mark Hendrickson from PlanCast uh, and Ben Katz, who has a, a lot of experience in Hollywood uh, and recently uh, sold a company uh, that he started also uh, down in LA that etches iPhones called uh, EtchStar, which was then bought by Coveroo. Uh, I think that after all this, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over again. Um, go to the next one. And then um, that'll, be, that'll be the end of it. We'll have probably half an hour towards the end that you can all sort of ask questions. And I think anything that we have sort of a, a, a lot of interest in, a lot of energy around, as far as doing a deep dive, we can, we can talk about those topics, uh, as well as just let you guys talk a little bit about your projects and how we might be able to help with those. Does that mean I'm Peter and you're Alice? <laughs> I'm not Alice. Alice is, Alice is still Alice. <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, definitions, I wanted to start a little bit uh, and just cover some of, some of the sort of very uh, early ground and I think maybe some of the speakers might even uh, disagree with some of the ways that we're defining things here. Uh, wh when I talk about virality, I'm generally talking about sort of just the, the degree to which something uh, gets propagated through a population. So, uh, you know, increasing something's virality means that that message or that product uh, or that action uh, is going to, to some extent, uh, through its own sort of uh, motion, let's say, propagate itself through a, a population the same way that a virus that might infect a person would propagate itself through a population. Uh, when something is uh, viral, you know, I generally like to think about that, that every person that, that, that gets affected by that message or every person that 
that product touches will lead to at least one other person also uh, being affected, which means that you can obviously see sort of the exponential growth curve when that happens, which every person that's infected will at least bring in another person that will hear that message or be affected by that message in some way. Um, and then finally, uh, some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about here is going to be around sort of buzz also, which is a, sort of one of these words that everyone throws around. Uh, Generally speaking, when I'm talking about buzz, I'm talking about sort of the conversation or the chatter that's created by an event or by an action, by an article that's published, by a, you know, a celebrity doing a certain action that just generates a lot of conversation and sort of uh, accelerates that conversation. So from our perspective, uh, I think especially Ben and Mark can talk a little bit about how they've used influencers and how they've used celebrities to generate that buzz that then spreads their message or spreads their product uh, to more and more people. Um, <laughs> That's a great ringer. <laughs> um, we, we, we developed a little bit of just a, sort of a framework for approaching this, which I'm calling the sort of left brain and right brain approach. And I think this has just been uh, based on pure observation and thinking about the two camps of how people try to approach virality and how people try to approach spreading a message. I think that the, uh, the left brain approach is the one that Matt and Ed and Dave are going to talk a little bit about, which is sort of that more quantitative approach. It's people that are looking at, hey, what's the actual viral factor of this message? You know, am I I'm measuring every step of the way and trying to figure out how that message is propagating through <coughs> a population and then iterating and testing different approaches to spreading that message in a way that uh, gets that message to spread more and more every time. So, you you know, there's that quantitative, let's say, testing and analytics driven approach. And then the other side of things is a, sort of this right brain approach, which I like to think about as sort of the more holistic, more creative approach that you might think about uh, when someone does uh, sort of a big PR event, you know, like Richard Branson jumping off a balloon. That's more like a right brain thing where, you know, that's going to be, that's going to cause a big shock and it's going to be a big event that people are going to talk about. That generally gets propagated uh, sort of through word of mouth. You know, I might see, hey, I saw this guy jumping off a balloon on Times Square and I'm going to tell my friends and it's such an awesome story that they're going to pass it on uh, from friend to friend. And uh, Ben is going to talk a little bit about how he's used celebrities and events to be able to do some of that. Uh, and Mark is going to talk a little bit about um, PlanCast and how he's been able to uh, reach out to influencers and really get uh, a lot of folks adopting his product and then propagating it and really acting as, um, really acting as, as his ambassadors for his product. So uh, first on the, on the left brain side, this is the more analytical thing. I think that the, uh, the things that are, that are really important here are that uh, the approach is fairly uh, quantitative. It's, uh, it's very granular in the sense that you actually want to look at every step of the interaction uh, and look at it in, in, in fair detail so that you can actually optimize each step of the interaction. Uh, and finally, it's something that uh, sort of metrics and testing, having that capability is, is really essential for you to be able to uh, get this working for you. I think uh, one of those classic examples of, uh, of, of this kind of virality might be what you might have seen with Hotmail in the like, mid-90s. Uh, I don't know who, who knows the story of, of Hotmail and how they got a lot of their early growth, but every time you would send an email message, uh, on the signature of that message, Hotmail would uh, automatically append a signature that said, you know, want free, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like, want free email, why not get one at Hotmail? We see this all the time now with ads on Yahoo Mail, Hotmail, et cetera, but this is the first time anyone did it. So anytime someone would actually send an email using Hotmail, they were automatically acting as a, sort of a, an endorser or a salesperson of that product because every email they sent was uh, invariably an invitation for the, for the recipient to join Hotmail, and you can see how that uh, that number of invitations and just getting those conversion rates could actually lead sort of Hotmail to spread rapidly through the population as as it did. Um, you could think about that email program today, um, and you could think about you know Facebook uh, Facebook platform when it first came out, and all these different applications like you know Superpoke and you know, causes even uh, that were very much driven by invitations, right? Where these applications really drove you to invite as many people as possible and then really optimize a lot of those invitations for conversion for people to add that application and then uh, go through that flow again. So, that, you know, it, it, it looks fairly simple, I think, on the surface of it, but what's really happening is there's a, a lot of, uh, of, of a quantitative approach to it where, you know, the people behind, let's say, Slide or Rock you, that were launching some of these uh, Facebook applications were really measuring every Everything that was going out there, you know, what percentage of people are even opening our invitations and how many of them are converting and how many people are they inviting. Uh, and Ed is going to tell you a little bit about how he's been able to take uh, some of those ideas uh, and actually apply them and be fairly successful both on Facebook and, and off Facebook. Um, 
The other approach uh, is that uh, the right brain approach, a much more sort of creative genius approach, I'm going I'm to call it, uh, which again is, is much more focused on an approach that's a little bit more holistic, right? You want to look at, uh, you know, what's the story that you're telling and really be able to use that story to have the right emotional hooks to get people's attention and really move them to action in a way that makes them remember your story, makes them want to tell their friends. And you, you can really engineer a lot of the, the incentives around some of these emotions so that people have a greater incentive to actually share that story uh, and propagate it. And here I think what, what, what's, what's interesting here is that one of the things you really want to do is you want to take that message and you want to make it really memorable. And you also want to make that message something that people want to share with others, whether it's through uh, built-in incentives in the system that you've built or maybe just something that you know, really grips uh, you from an emotional level that you can't help but share it with other people. Um, at Experience Project, we've done a lot of this stuff in terms of uh, cause-based marketing. So, um, you know, if, if you find something that's happening in the world that you know might be a great injustice, maybe someone is uh, sort of suffering a great degree because of something that happened to them, if you can share that that person's story with the world in a way that's very emotional and really uh, enables people to empathize with their situation and shows them how they might be able to relate to them and how they might be able to make a difference, and moreover, how not only them doing something but also getting as many of their friends to do that uh, will help out. That helps to get that message to become uh, propagated more and more through uh, sort of the population that you might be targeting. Um, I think uh, sort of a, a, a classic example of this might be Paul Revere's ride, you know, way back when. Uh, you know, the, the, he wrote around the U.S. saying the British are coming, right? So it's a very important message that uh, he really wants to propagate through, through, through the colony uh, and tells people, hey, here's my message. This is why it's important. This is why it's in your interest to share it with as many people as possible. And then that message just through natural word of mouth of people telling their friends and telling their, telling their villages and telling other cities, that propagates it, right? Because it's a, it's a, a very very uh, timely message and one that's very important for you to really share. Uh, I think we've also seen a lot of other examples with like movies recently, right? Like uh, a couple years ago, you know, Blair Witch Project. That was sort of a there's so much buzz around that and everyone talking about it and you know all the the legend around Blair Witch that people had built. And I think we saw this a, a little bit again with Paranormal Activity, uh, you know, last year with people really being able to tell a great story, making that a story that people want to share with their friends and they really want to propagate it out there. Uh, so, but I'll leave that to uh, Ben and Mark and talk a little bit about how to you know make your product. Uh, something that people want to share with with each other, and also how to use uh, you know celebrities and influencers and people that you, people that others care about, whether it's media or uh, people of high profile, to be able to tell that message for you. Because I think that can actually be a really powerful way of spreading your message, is to get the right people to tell your story. Um, I think obviously. Uh, Finally, the, the, the thing that's the most important here is, you know, how do all these things come together, right? Like, it's not just about doing a left brain approach or a right brain approach, but it's like, you know, like Voltron, how do you get all the different pieces to come together and have the sum be greater than, the, uh, the, than each of the parts? Like, how can you use uh, sort of left brain tactics in conjunction with the sort of right brain tactics to really either accelerate uh, the speed with which your, your message is propagating or maybe, or maybe tip that sort of that, that viral loop, right? You might be getting really close to making uh, your message or your product viral and really what you need is sort of that last bit of branding or that last bit of buzz or that last bit of uh, appearance within your story to sort of just tip the needle and make it happen. So I think uh, w what I'm going to try to push everyone to do is to think a little bit about, hey, how can I use some of the uh, left brain stuff in conjunction with the right brain stuff to really get my message to be more viral and to really get to more people. Uh, so to finally, uh, I think we're obviously not going to be able to touch on everything here, so feel free to uh, reach out to me with uh, any questions uh, or anything like that. I'm happy also to put you in touch with uh, any of our panelists to the extent that, uh, that you want to get in touch with them, and hopefully we can keep this conversation going, because I think a lot of the questions are really going to come up when you're actually doing things uh, with your project. And that's sort of the last piece of advice I'll give you is that you know, don't delay actually getting a project started and actually doing things. The longer you talk about something uh, and the, the less you're going to be able to actually learn and figure out, uh, you know, from real users or from real people that you're reaching out the message, how, how, they're, taking, uh, how they're taking the product that you're pitching or how they're taking the, the message or the call to action that you're pitching. So, you know, try to just get stuff out there, just really rough prototypes that you can start sharing on social networks or using social media and start getting some real feedback so that you can learn from that. And then you can keep iterating from that and, and, and moving, moving forward with that. So with that said, I'm going to um, pass things over to Andy. He's going to talk a little bit about how this ties to the class, and, and, and we'll go to the panels from there.